All right, so I got the test tubes out, uh, and I what I did to actually keep them on, uh, uh, labeled, rather than actually label the um, uh, test tubes themselves, is I uh, grabbed just some paper towels and made a little chart. And I even did it so if I pick up the test tube rack, I'm just going to put between the two little lines I put on there. But I have my test tube rack numbered 1 through 10, and then I'm going to put test tube 11 back over here. So I'm going to set these aside for later. They're like that. But I went ahead and cleaned them, and they're, they're good to go for our later runs. So, also, in the shop, right behind us are all the chemicals that we're going to use. So, I am going to do them just in order. And I also, because some of these are endothermic and exothermic reactions, we're going to measure the temperature of them as they go. And um, I already have that on. I actually, once I put like the first solution in, I'll put the temperature probe in there and then I'll add the second solution to it. Then we should be to see if there's a temperature change. All right, and all the temperatures should be the same because I've had all the chemicals out here in the lab for like the last four hours just to get the normal temperature. All right, so the first solution we're going to use is uh, going to have sodium chloride in it. And it is just salt. Matter of fact, if you were to drink this, it'd probably not even taste nearly as strong as salt water. On most of the bottles, when we have it for students, I have a little spot here to the side to put the um, urette or the pipette in there when we're done with it. That's where I'm going to leave it when I'm done. And it does say we want to get about um, two milliliters in there. Well, I'm not going to measure these out. These, these pipettes themselves are actually uh, measured to some accuracy. What I'm going to do instead is make about uh, two centimeters in depth. That'll be roughly two milliliters in these containers. And I'll just be consistent with that across the board. Right, so I got my two good squirts in there, about two centimeters deep. Put that one back. And I left that uh, pipette with it, so if we need it again, it's that same one. And give a good idea of what the temperature is. And. Yeah, it's barely changed from what it was sitting out in the air. It says 22.1 degrees. All right. To this, I'm going to mix some silver nitrate. The biggest reason it's in a bar, dark bottle is the silver nitrate will slightly break down in sunlight. This keeps it a little bit longer life. And right now, there is... looks like clear liquid, and the silver nitrate technically looks like clear liquid as well. And I'm just going to squirt my squirts in there. And put this back up. Now when I lift this up, um, you can already tell it's got full of a white precipitate. Throughout. It almost looks like milk. And if I feel it, it doesn't notice a temperature difference, but if I put my probe down in there, it's hardly changed at all. Yeah, I'd be safe to say it hasn't even changed. All right, but I did get a precipitate. Now, if we look at our data sheets, we actually made up those equations ahead of time. And since uh, we did this with um, we would have predicted that solid, that precipitate that would form was silver chloride. And that's what we're actually seeing is that white powder is silver chloride. So on our data sheet, we can now go back on there and write down that that uh, precipitate is white, as we know for sure. All right, the next one we're going to do is number two, which is zinc metal and then some hydrochloric acid. Now, the zinc metal, it really is just metal. And there's nothing dangerous about just reaching in there and grabbing some of it. So I didn't actually go through the back and get my small. Just look at this. That, that's that's one chunk. That's not going in a test tube. But by digging down in here, I found a little tiny piece, a little tiny speck. And that's plenty. So I'm just putting it down in there. And now I need some one molar HCl. Now, it is acid. It would hurt if we got it in contact here with you. Uh, so if you're a little bit worried, get some gloves on. 
Um, I'm not terribly worried about getting this on me. It will, it's about the strength of stomach acid. So yeah, it hurt if I have a cut, but it'll come off if I want when I wash my hands. And put a couple squirts of this in here. There might be something wrong with my one molar HDL. H cell is not quite as strong as it's supposed to be. It might be like half of a molar. But it is actually ever so slightly bubbling. And technically those bubbles are hydrogen gas, just like we predicted when we did our uh, balance equation. So that's a single replacement reaction. The Cl from the HCl ended up making zinc chloride. And then um, the hydrogen is coming out as a gas. And if I look really close, it is producing bubbles get that closer to my camera. Hopefully, you'll be able to see it. Is it going to focus for me? Yeah, I'm about to give up on this. But it, it, the outside surface of the metal has actually built up some bubbles. This is not bubbling as profusely as it would if I were to grab some stronger acid. And what the heck? I have six molar acid over here. Let's be crazy. have a little uh, test tube on the side of this container. So I'm just going to set it right here since I'm the only one in here and put the uh, pipette right on top so I can use it again if I need to. And I'm getting a lot more bubbles now. It's not bubbling like crazy, but it's noticeably bubbling. Okay, number three is sodium phosphate. Sodium phosphate. Pretty blue solution. Now when you get to the lab, there is one molar um, copper sulfate in here as well. It's a noticeably darker color. Uh, so we want the lesser one now. Not that big of a deal if you mix it, you just won't get the exact, uh, you won't get the noticeable results like you want it to. I'll have to make up some more of this. sit some and actually check it here in a moment. And I do notice just by touching it, this one actually feels a little bit cooler. Yeah, it's dropped about 21 degrees, so barely a temperature change, but it is a little bit lower than it was. So that, that is an endothermic process as they're mixing, just not hugely so. I didn't actually measure the temperature of this one, but I don't expect to get anything out of it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same as it was. When you're in the actual lab, you'll be able to feel the temperature on the ones that actually do something. All right, next one, number four, has copper metal in it. Just like the uh, zinc one, I am just going to 
find a piece of copper in here. Oh, these are covered with corrosion. They almost look like black marbles rather than copper colors. That's okay, it's gonna work. So, copper with some silver nitrates. So we already had the silver nitrate. This had that potential uh, single replacement reaction where the uh, copper and the silver change places. And we talked about how the um, activity chart kind of helps you understand which way it's going to go. But right now it just looks like a wet piece of copper. We're going to let it sit and see if we notice a change. We're going to go ahead and do the next one. All right, next one is the... Um, uh, you know, fifth grade science fair project, so some sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, and then we're going to add some acid to it, so just one molar HCl. So I'm just going to get a little bit of my baking soda on the end of a spatula and put it down here in this test tube number five. And I can put the uh, baking soda back over here. And this one has a spatula, I'm just going to leave on the lid on the top as well. And then into that, we're going to put one molar HCl. This one's probably a little bit more important. Don't mix this one up with six, because this is definitely going to bubble. And six molar would probably cause it to bubble when it come out of the uh, test tube. It would just be making a mess. And we are treating the test tube like that's always a possibility, so we do want to always do these in the, in the, uh, in the rack rather than hold the test tube. Unlike the one with the zinc, this one bubbles quite noticeably right off the get -go. And I've just put some in there, so hopefully you can see it shooting up the side of the test tube. It's not coming out, but there's definitely some bubbles, like an alpha seltzer tablet. Looks like a soda now, I got it to foam up. Uh, the bubbles are CO2, like we talked about when we wrote up our equations. That's what happens anytime you neutralize or destroy bicarbonates or carbonates. All right, number six has sil uh, nickel nitrates. It's a pretty green solution. predicted, since it's hydroxide, that when the uh, nickel got with the hydroxide, we would actually get some nickel hydroxide precipitating out. So we are expecting a little bit of precipitate here. And it is a green solution still, but in here you can definitely tell more of that solid. Just not sure what color it is. We're going to let it settle out some. It gives us a chance to go back and look at um, our copper one, and it's somewhat settled, but it's not settled enough for us to see what color it is. And also, the copper that we put the silver in, I'm getting little flakes of stuff in there, but I don't have any of the blue liquid yet, so I'm not seeing definite signs that it's doing a full double displacement reaction. All right, number seven. Copper metal again, but this time it's with zinc. Copper. Got about the exact same size of copper as we did before.
the left piece of copper. Alright. While we'll let that sit, we're going to mix number 8, hydrochloric acid, with sodium hydroxide. I've got my one molar HCl. This is a neutralization reaction. It's one we talked about when we first talked about calorimetry. So we do expect this to be an exothermic process. Give it a good mix. Oh yeah, noticeably more. And about 22 degrees normally. And this is 25, 26, still going up. About 27 degrees. So it warmed up by about 5 degrees just by mixing those two degrees together. So quite exothermic. Sodiums are always soluble, and potassiums are always soluble, so it shouldn't make a difference if they mix. It would be interesting if there's a temperature change. Though. So, there was our sodium chloride in there. Here is our potassium. exactly where it was expected. So it really is nothing happened. No temperature change, no mixing of the ions. The uh, net equation, net ionic equation that is, would show absolutely nothing because everything's expected. Everything. Alright, number 10, he said magnesium metal and some uh, sulfuric acid. So similar to what we did with the zinc metal up above, these are also little tiny t pieces. Um, they actually always, always look corroded, these little magnesium turnings. But um, they're small enough. I'm going to go ahead and put two pieces in. And then, sulfuric acid. No, test tube ones. Unlike the zinc, this one started bubbling like immediately on the acid heading in. It's actually coming out enough that it's clearly bubbling, and if I was feeling dangerous, I'd get out a match and try to set it on fire. Probably shouldn't do that when I'm the one in the lab. Alright, number 11, last one of these test tubes. Got some iron chloride. Now this is a weird one I have to keep an eye on when I bring it out here for you guys because the iron itself just actually kind of rusts while it's in the water because the um, air gets in with it. So I had to remake this stuff here, honestly. but it's in good shape right now. So it's got a nice yellow color to it. expect the ammonium to stay with the corn and do nothing, but the hydroxide should mix with the iron and form a precipitate. And we almost immediately get a color change. It went 
from that yellow to almost like a, um, iron oxide or rust color, which makes sense because when I look at it, it is totally full you now of partic particles and they are orange in color. So that precipitate is the iron hydroxide or rust. All right, we skipped a few that we couldn't tell for sure. Our blue one still hasn't really settled as much as I'd like it to show on camera, but it is, it's noticeable more at the bottom that it's a white precipitate with a little bit of a tint of a blue. Um, our zinc and our copper, or not their zinc, this was the uh, copper with the silver, has a definite precipitate forming on the top of it. So that is doing a double displacement, it's just not actually got any of the, um, or it's doing a single displacement just hasn't got in any of the copper into the solution. Our other one was the uh, copper with zinc, and we just got a wet piece of copper there. Uh, no, this was the copper with, yeah, this is the copper with the zinc. Nothing happens there. It won't do a displacement on that. But, but that gets us done with part A.